The Empty Seat is a travel show about my adventures on a tandem bicycle as I pedal across the country, convincing other people to climb aboard and tell their story. In this episode of The Empty Seat, we'll be traveling to the Kenai Peninsula of Alaska, where you'll find some of the best salmon fishing in the world. We begin our ride in the city of Kenai and travel all the way to Homer, Alaska, where the land ends and the sea begins. Along the way, we'll get some Alaskan residents on the empty seat and listen to their stories about their experiences living up here in the last frontier. The empty seat, the empty seat, places to go, people to meet, down countryside. Or city streets, you'll find it all on the empty sea. So follow me, I'll take you there. Tell your tale, it's time to share. Down lonely roads, or busy streets, come take a ride on the empty sea. It's waiting here. On the MTC. All right. The empty seat in Alaska. Still going strong. I could use a rider though. That'd help out. Alright, here we go. When I get back to my home, hey I can tell my tale. I did, I did, I did the did a ride trail. Let's see if I can get somebody to ride with me. He's at their house. I saw a guy over here. Hey, hello there. Howdy. I got a show called The Empty Seat. I've been trying to get some Alaskan, native Alaskans here to take a ride with me on a bike. You ever rode on a tandem bike? No. It's scary. It's, I think you'll be fine. You look like you got a lot of old cars here. So uh, you look like an adventurous guy. How about let's take a ride? You got a seat belt? <laughs> Got a helmet if you want. A helmet. One, two, three, go. All right, jeez. Hmm, I think we're in low, low. We are in low, low. Is this thing trying to skip gears with all that? Yeah, going? I don't know. Wow, what's uh, it's going like on it's, with my it's, gears? It's like it's there, it's better. If it was in between. There you go. How long have you lived in Alaska, we'll John? 1968, we moved up here. From where? Well, we came up from Michigan. Okay. What brought you up here? Well, mostly to get away from Michigan. There. Okay, <laughs> all right. What'd you do as a trade when you came up here? Well, I thought I was going to homestead. I had okay. a, an old Jeep and a truck and uh, body tools and parts uh -huh. in it. Drug an old house trailer. But we got up here and homesteaded. It closed in 67, so we missed it by a year. So I did auto body repair work. For okay different shops for a few years and then I opened up my own for a few years. And I've just been doing it ever since. All right. I saw you had a lot of old vehicles there. Uh, how many cars do you have? Depends on if you mean running cars or just yeah. cars. <laughs> I got like eight of them. Eight of them? Yeah, that are, in, most of them are restored. A few of them, various stages. Okay. What's the oldest one you have? Oh, uh, I think a 34 Ford. A ton and a half truck. Are you somebody who goes out hunting and fishing over the years? I used to hunt and fish a lot. I had three different airplanes at different times. Did you fly into lakes then? Or? Yeah, yeah, I flew into lakes. Well, I never did get any instruction. I just got traded to the log cabin for a plane. And the guy showed me how to fly it, oh, so boy. I just started flying. Good. Now, when you said you hunted, what did you hunt around here? Moose? Moose and caribou mostly. Okay. Yeah. Moose is a good staple. What's the flavor of, what's moose taste like? Oh, it's typically like beef. It yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't have a venison taste to me at all. It's more, it just tastes like moose, I guess. We got some major gravel here. We got some rough stuff. We got some rough stuff for this bike. Had two boys. I wanted to raise them in Alaska. I uh -huh. thought that'd be good. My wife said she'd try it for a year, and then we found out what sourdoughs are. What are sourdoughs? Well, you're sour on Alaska and you haven't got enough dough to leave. <laughs> but really sourdoughs are people that spend the winter here, I think. 
Well, it's kind of fun. I don't mind riding yeah. if somebody does the work. Yeah, well, you're pedaling along too. John recommended that we head over to the Soldatna Prager Days Parade. He thinks we'll see quite a few Alaskans out today for the parade. And also, we're going to get a great opportunity to see him drive one of these old-fashioned cars. The empty seats here in Soldotna, Alaska. We're going to be riding in the Progress Days Parade today and hoping to get a few riders from Alaska. You know when they say that once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget? Yes. You, you, you forgot, huh? <laughs> I need a rider here. Any volunteers? <laughs> Ready? Let's go. Ready? One, two, three, go. Hey, all right. What is your name? Derek. All right, Derek. Do you live here in town? Yep, I live right on the other side of the soil. Grew up here? Yeah. You're a good sport. Boy, I need a rider here. Any, anybody? No? That, there's a rider right there. Look. We used to have one. Right there. No? All right. I'm looking for a rider. If he had boots on, some good rubber boots, that'd be great. Hey, right there. No. <laughs> Have you ever been on a tandem bike in a parade? He would, he, I got a feeling he would be reckless. Oh, I'm looking for a rider over here. You? I don't know. How about her? No? <laughs> Not today? All right, maybe another day. How come everybody says that? I'm good. Next time. You're ready to ride, huh? You think I can? Yeah. yeah. I can't. You're on, Dorothy. All right. Hey, everyone, we got Dorothy from Missouri back here. She's never been on a stand bike. Wait, hello, Dorothy. Hi, uh, uh, Dorothy. <laughs> well, I'm looking for a rider here. I had, a, I had somebody on, and she wanted me to pop a wheelie about two miles back, and she fell off, so I'm looking for to replace her. What do you say? You're all right. What do you say? No? No one? No one? No riders? All right, we got a dog on the empty seat. Yay! All right, all right. what's your dog's name? Gwenny. Gwenny? Yeah. Is the name of the dog? Yep. All right. Yay, clean water. That's our MO today. So tell me more about that. So I, I'm volunteering with a local nonprofit. They do clean water, healthy salmon advocacy. Okay. Today our big project is helping out a citizen group across Cook Inlet uh -huh. to prevent a mining company from outside digging up their whole salmon stream. So we're collecting petitions to please ask them not to mine directly through a salmon well, stream. Well, uh, I could bet a lot of people would sign that. Yeah. <laughs> How's the dog doing? Oh, she's great. She yep. loves it. Good, good. Yay, clean water, healthy clean salmon. Clean water, healthy salmon. <laughs> I'm helping you out. Thank you. Clean water, healthy salmon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tell them your name. I'm Caitlin with Cook Inlet Keeper, and we love clean water and healthy salmon. All right. <laughs> On the empty seat. Thanks for letting me yeah. ride with you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we had a great time today at the Soldatna Progress Days Parade, but now it's time to get on the road. We're heading now to Land's End, Homer, Alaska. Along the road, we were fortunate enough to run into Bill, a longtime Alaskan native who invited the empty seat in and out of the rain. Bill is a highly decorated veteran, 
a Purple Heart recipient who came up to Alaska to homestead after his service to the country in World War II. Wow. Can you imagine three, three double beds in there? Three double beds, huh? Yeah. Bill took some time to tell us about his career as a commercial fisherman, fishing for salmon out in Alaskan waters, and he also took us for a tour of his cabin that he built with his own hands over 50 years ago. Ready? No. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I got it up there. All right. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Oh, I got a. Alaska homesteader, build on the back of the bike. You went into the service, what year you said? In uh, 44, 1944. 1944. I got out in 46. Got out in 46 and served in the Pacific Theater, right? Right. And right now you're telling us you're a commercial fisherman yeah. by trade. 44 and years, 44 years. 44 years in the business, a commercial fisherman fishing for salmon here in Alaska. You got to pedal too. What's that? I say you have to pedal too. Yeah, I'm pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> you were just coasting. How old are you? 93. 93. 93, you're the oldest guy I've ever been on the empty seat. <laughs> I tell you that. Oh, there's a moose over there. Straight ahead. Mount Iliamna and Mount Redoubt, two volcanoes off the Alaskan coast, the Kenai Peninsula. Now the empty seats here in Homer, Alaska, we made it all the way. Quite a few miles to get here. Out in the Cook Inlet behind me, these halibut get to be 400 pounds. So we hope to get down into Homer right now, see some halibut, and, and maybe get a few fishermen to jump on back and ride the empty seat. on a tandem. I have a show called The Empty Seat. Oh, I try to get people to ride with me. What do you say? Yeah, I'll take a ride with you. All right, let's do it. I'll get you all the way in. Right on, thank you. All right, ready? Yeah. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, we'll start riding. Okay. One, two, three, go. I saw you hitching up there. Well, where are you from? I'm from um, Kauai. Kauai? Yeah. Yeah, great, yeah. it was a great place. I love that uh, island. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. We grew up subsistence out there. Yeah? Growing our own food and fishing and farming. Great. Are you fishing up here in Alaska quite a bit? Yeah, I was actually I was on a fishing boat in Bristol Bay, but I hurt my knee. Oh, okay. And I came back to town. I'm out here working for the summer. I'm up at working at Cold Point. I just wanted to check out the kind of Alaska's last frontier, you know? Yeah. Well, you're going to. That's a great trip for you. Well, it's so scenic right here. I rode this bike downhill up from the top of the hill there. Yeah. Hey man, I appreciate that ride. Hey, it's been fun for me. Yeah, it's a blessing, man. Nice to, to uh, find out a little about you and have somebody on the ride with me. Let me know how, where do you want to go. I'll take you all the way there. Hey, great riding with you. Thanks, hey, good luck to you. Have a great yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. All right, the empty seats here. We rode all the way from Kenai to Homer, and we're here in front of the Salty Dog, famous bar, and we're gonna go inside and have a drink. It says no dogs, doesn't say anything about tandem bikes, though. Let's give it a shot. Oh, cool, they're gonna let you do it. No, they aren't, but I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Let's see if they take bikes in here. Hey, slow hey are bikes are loud in here? Where are you gonna put it? 
Any room for a bike in here? No. No? Yeah, we're buying a beer. We can hang it from up there maybe, huh? All right. Do you allow bikes in here? No. Oh. If you take it out the door, if you yep. the back door, you can take it to the back porch. There you go. That's good. That's good enough. Back porch would be great. The Salty Dog is a famous Alaskan saloon and one of the most historic landmarks in the Kenai Peninsula. It was originally built in 1897, and everyone who comes to Homer bellies up to the bar for a drink. It's a tradition to write your name or message on a dollar bill or business card and pin it to the wall or ceiling while you're in the Salty Dog. And the empty seat manage to squeeze inside this tiny saloon and leave a memento of our visit. While out on the open road, we usually have to ask our riders to get on the empty seat. But these next two riders approached us in the Salty Dog and ask if they could climb on board and go for a ride. One, two, three, just start pedaling. All right, all right, you're up. Here we go. Doing fine. Woo-hoo! Homer Spit. So what's your name? My name's Patty. Patty. And how long have you been in Alaska? Uh, this is a third full day. And what have you been doing? We rode bicycle yesterday. Oh, come on, this is not even, this is not even the first bike you rode? Oh my goodness. Oh, so is this your first time up here? Yes. Great. What other cities have you been to? Just Anchorage, through the Bears tomorrow at Halo Bay. Yeah. And we're going to head down to Seward and then we're going up to Denali for a week. Okay, that'd be great. Wow, you guys have a great trip. Yeah, we planned. do. A trip of a lifetime. It is a trip of a lifetime. Salty dogs ahead. Coming into the Salty Dog. Here we go. Coming on in. All right. Boy, that's a gamer right there. All right, hang on. I'm doing awesome. more things on this trip so far that I've done in 40 years. All right, all right. Thanks so much. That was great. Have a great trip. Thanks, you too. One, two, three, pedal. Oh, Dad, you have a good voice? Well, I don't have a good voice, no, yeah. No, I just. All right, so you're from Minnesota? Look at, I don't have to do, this is what I'm saying. I don't have to do anything. Hey, are you, yeah, are you, you've ridden tandem quite a bit? Yeah. So do you so you'll head back after the summer or? Yeah, I'll head back after the summer. Alright. Back to Minnesota, huh? Back to Minnesota. I've been cruising around and traveling around a lot the past couple of years. Well, so. my advice is do that as much as you can. It's the plan. Where have you gone in Alaska? Have you I've gone all over the Kenai. I'd like to do the resurrection trail. That's on the bike, right? Yeah, hell That's yeah. what Shane and I were talking about today. Yeah. The next couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. 40 miles. It is 40 miles. Yeah. I think it starts around Hope, right? Yep. Goes the Goes sewer. To landing. Cooper, yeah. Know. Pretty good fisherman? Fisherwoman? No, uh -uh. no we went, you're not? No, we went to, I can't, I've caught one sock ice because I've been here two months. No! Yeah. Oh, well, catching the, the humpies? Yeah. Oh, humpies. Because they just catch on real quick, it's easy. Yeah, humpies are fun to catch, you're right. They're ugly, they got the They're ugly, they got the, the yeah. We're catching those sockeye all the time. We get a humpy, we get disappointed. Oh my God, God, get off my hook. Get off. All right. All right, great job. These folks from Minnesota know how to ride. <laughs> that was the best rider I had in, a, in two weeks. Excellent. No problem, hey, Thank thanks you. a lot. Nice to yeah. meet you. Well, it's been a great ride today down the Kenai Peninsula to Homer, Alaska. The scenery is beautiful here at Land's End. Tomorrow we're going to be heading back and we're also going to get out our fishing poles so we can catch some more sockeye salmon. Coming into the Double Barrel Lodge now. Here's the owner of the Double Barrel Lodge. How you doing there, sir? Very good. How about you? Great. Hey, I wanted to thank you for uh, hosting the empty seat. This week, we are able to stay at your place for free. And we want to, uh, we've taken all sorts of people for a ride in Alaska. We've been here on the Kenai Peninsula. The last ride is the owner of the Double Barrel Lodge. I feel honored. Leave your shotgun behind, though. I don't think we'll have any need for shooting squirrels. All right. So how many years you been up here in Alaska? I've been up here 20 years. 20 years. So what do your summers look like? Uh, how often are you fishing for reds? Every day during the red season. And how many visitors you usually get? 
Well, mostly friends and family come up every year. And do, you, do most of them know how to fish or do you have to show them I how? I have to show most of them. Is there a trick to it or? There's a trick to it. What's the coldest it gets in Sterling, Alaska? 45 below is the coldest it's been since I've been here. Do you go outside on days like that? Can't go outside for more than 10 minutes. Going fast here. We're gonna hill, hill. And then in the summertime, how late can you fish? You ever fish late into the night with the sun being up? Well, the reds hold up at night, but the, the early run reds, they can speed right through so you can fish all night. Besides reds, what do you fish for up here? Silvers, kings, trout, dolly varden. And how do you fish for king? Generally in a boat. You gotta go out? Yeah. How about halibut? Do you go out halibut every year? I go out halibut twice a year. How big do halibut get, usually, the ones you're catching? Well, the biggest one I caught is 220 pounds. Whoa, man. I caught that's 180, a... 134. But recently, they were smaller. All right, we're coming back into the Double Barrel Lodge here. Well, the empty seat has finished. It travels in Kenai Peninsula, in Alaska. We want to thank our host at the Double Barrel Lodge, Ernie. Ernie, thanks a lot. We appreciate being able to stay here and fish for sockeye salmon and thanks for the ride, it's been a great trip. Check out themtc.com for more information about the show. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. Thanks for watching.